What is up YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hello, my name is Erica. It's so good to have you. And if you are not new, welcome back. I have a very exciting video today. I love watching reading wrap ups and TBR videos. So today we are gonna do what I read in the month of July. And when I tell you guys, it was a freaking good month. I got some five stars. I got some good cozy fantasies, some romance books, even like a murder mystery. I'm gonna show you guys right now because I read, oh my God, 11 books in the month of July, which is almost a record for me. I also read 11 last month. So maybe this month we'll read 12. But in today's video, we're gonna unpack everything. I'm gonna give you guys my thoughts, ratings, reviews on all the books that I read in the month of July. So let's get into it. I'm going to pull up my Goodreads so that I have my ratings and everything and I don't miss anything. I'll also put my Goodreads on the screen somewhere here. So if you guys want to follow me and be friends, we can do that together. Whew. I feel like I'm going to be yapping for a bit. Got to get comfortable. All right. First things first, I started off the month strong with a five-star read. This is One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig. And I was in the mood for a cozy fantasy. I believe this is also classified as a gothic fantasy. And I have to say, I loved the magic system in this book. This book, the magic system is based on tarot cards. And I feel like a lot of the fantasy books that I've been reading lately involve trials. Like I read Powerless, which reminded me a lot of Hunger Games. I read the Crown of Nyaxia series that had trials in it. Just a lot of those types of fantasy, which I do like, but after a while, I feel like they get repetitive. So when I was picking this one up, I was like, please, dear God, let there not be a trial. And there wasn't, so I was pleasantly surprised by that. And I loved the way that this book drew you in. The writing style was so beautiful. There is some romance in this book, but nothing crazy. I would say, if I remember correctly, there was like a little bit of spice. So keep that in mind, but nothing super graphic. Anyways, small bits of romance, but mostly just like focused on the actual plot of the fantasy novel. And this is part of a duology, which I will touch on later in the video because spoiler alert, I also read the second one, but keeping with the theme of this first book, loved it, loved the writing style, loved the actual magic system. And I just feel like it was a very cozy fall read, which I obviously read this in July, but if you're looking for something to put on your fall TBR, that's gonna give you that cozy, like mysterious fantasy vibe, I would highly recommend this book and this duology. I was debating giving you guys like a little bit of a plot overview, but I honestly just want you guys to go into it blind, knowing that it's a cozy fantasy with a little bit of romance and the magic system is based on a tarot card. So that's all I'm gonna say for this one. Oh my God, I need to get comfortable. If you guys have been here before, you may know that I am an Ashley Poston fan. I love seven year, the seven year slip. Whoa, why did I literally just have a brain fart? The seven year slip was one of my favorite books that I read last year. It's a five star, still to this day, one of my favorite books and I cannot wait to do a reread, but I did pick up Dead Romantics because I wanted to read all of her books naturally. And I believe I rated this one a four star or a 3.75, let's see. I rated this a four star. I really liked it. It was also giving cozy vibes. This book is a romance. And if you're familiar with Ashley Poston's writing, a lot of her books also involve some kind of like magical realism. So this one specifically involved ghosts and spirits. So if you're not into that, don't pick this book up. But honestly, I was a little bit like put off slightly by that before picking up this book and actually reading it and when you read it it doesn't really even feel that like magical or that fake I guess is a better way of putting it it does feel magical but not fake I'm gonna leave it at that. This book is super cute. It's set in a town where the main character's family actually owns a funeral home. So that's why it kind of gives cozy fall romance to me. A lot of the books this month that I read did give cozy fall. So maybe use this as your fall TBR, I don't know. But again, love this, love her writing style. It's very lyrical and beautiful and poetic. I don't really know how else to describe her writing. If you've ever read one of her books, you know what I mean. I'm gonna leave it at that. Loved this book, four stars. Not a five star on that seven year slip level, but still a really good book and I will always love Ashley Poston. Okay, then I read Heartless by Elsie Silver and this is the second book in the Chestnut Spring series, which I know I'm a little bit late on. I feel like a lot of people have already read this entire series, but it's never too late to pick up a cowboy romance in my opinion. I read the first one last month and I read this one this month. This book is a single dad trope. It's a romance novel if I didn't say that already and it's a cowboy romance. There is a decent amount of spunt in this series, so I just want to preface it by saying that these are spicy romance books so if you're not into that then I maybe would suggest not reading them but honestly 
do it because they're really really good and I love the found family in this series I love the world that Elsie Silver has created in this series and I'm only on book two I feel like that says a lot I love that all of the books are centered around different brothers I think most of them are at least and all the brothers have such different personalities which makes it interesting this one like I said is a single dad trope and it's just very wholesome but very spicy and it was unsuspecting there were things that happened in this book where it took a turn and i was like oh, okay that's definitely not something that i anticipated which i like i don't like it when i know what's happening on page one like i need surprises to keep me entertained and flipping through the book i ended up rating this one a 3.75 i liked it it wasn't mind-blowing but it was a really good spicy romance Next up, we have Summer Romance by Annabelle Monaghan, and I felt like it was the perfect time to read this, seeing as it's July, or it was July at the time, and I rated this one a 3.75. I picked this up originally because I love Destiny Sidwell's videos on YouTube. If you don't watch her, she's like one of the biggest uh, booktubers there are right now, so I don't know how you haven't seen her content if you're watching this video, but regardless, I picked it up because she rated this a five star and raved about it, and I can see why she really liked this book. It was very wholesome. I love the underlying just like plot points of coming of age um even though she's like 30 it's i guess coming of age isn't the right term evolving as a parent i want to say she's a single mom who's kind of going through this period where she has to date again or wants to date again and wants to find herself as a single mom and as a woman who's in her 30s and has kids and just like going through life without a husband and someone to rely on it was it was very very touching and heartwarming and I feel like relatable probably for a lot of people. One thing that I don't always love in books is kids. Like I don't always love kids in novels just because I feel like writers don't always write them according to their age very well but I feel like it was done really well in this book. I didn't get that five star feeling like Destiny did but I do really enjoy this book. It did surprise me there were plot points that I wasn't expecting. It just wasn't like my all-time favorite book which is why I rated it a 3.75. It's one of those books where I don't think I'm really gonna think about it that much after I finished it but if someone asked me if I enjoyed it I would say yes. It's a good book. It's a good summer romance no pun intended if you're looking for something like that all right then we read the second book in the crown what's this duology even called the shepherd king then i read the second book in the shepherd king duology which is two twisted crowns by rachel gillig i rated this one a 4.5 i just felt like parts of it were dragged out towards the end but i will say i actually think i like the romance in this book better than the romance in the first book. I just like the banter and the energy between the love interests in this book more than the first book, but the plot kind of felt a little bit flat in some areas of this book. I know I rated it a 4.5 though, so like I did really enjoy it, don't get me wrong. It just wasn't as good as the first one in my opinion. So still a very cozy, gothic, fantasy with some romance loved this duology i think as a duology i'm giving it a five star overall because i really did enjoy it and i loved the magic system but i preferred the first book over the second book I needed to switch up the genre so I picked up this murder mystery which I've heard amazing things about on social media. It's called The Perfect Marriage by Geneva Ross. Wrote Geneva Ross. Geneva Rose. If you've read The Housemaid it is kind of similar to The Housemaid and I knew that going in which is why I gave it a four star because I knew what the ending was going to be before I even started this book which did kind of ruin it but I will say if I didn't know what the ending was going to be this book would have been a five star. I loved how fast paced it was. The chapters are very short, so I was flipping through them so, so quickly. It was very entertaining. I didn't feel like there was any point in the book that like fell flat or could have been skipped over. Like the way that she wrote this was perfect in my opinion. If you're looking for a mystery, I would highly recommend this book. And I'm definitely gonna pick up some more books by Geneva Rose after reading this one. Then I read a book which I don't physically have. I read it on my Kindle, but it is called Mile High by Liz Tom Ford. And it is book one in the Windy City series. I'll put a photo on the screen in case you're wondering. I rated this book a 3.5. 0.75. It is a romance novel. It's a sports romance and it is about a flight attendant who works for a hockey team and the, one of the hockey players that she works for and they're romance if you will so that's all i'm going to say in regards to the plot besides the fact that it is very spicy and kind of insta lust but not really it also is kind of forbidden romance because they work 
together and so they're not really supposed to be in a relationship or have any sort of contact if that makes sense outside of work so if you like that forbidden romance trope then you probably will like this book i will say that the spice was good i liked the smut but sometimes i feel like it can overpower a book and there were moments where i felt like it almost did that so i did rate this a 3.75 i really liked the environment and the setting and i felt like the way that she writes liz tom ford writes in a way where i can visually really picture what's going on in the scene and the environment that we're in which doesn't always happen in books for me so i really like that and overall i feel like she set it up really well to create it into a series they are i believe like standalones in a series but i will be reading them in order i just like the found family that she created and there's lots of diff different directions and characters that she's kind of thrown in there as side characters that we can then take and create their own book so i'm really excited about that i think overall it is a really cute romance series with some good smut if you like sports romances then i would recommend reading the series then the month took a little bit of a turn and when i say a little bit of a turn i mean i picked up ninth house by lee bardugo and i got just under 100 pages before i said no more i cannot read this book so i didn't technically read 11 books i read 10 and then i dnf this i got like a quarter of the way through i just could not get into this book i didn't read anything going into it so i want to preface it by saying that so i wasn't aware that there were actually a lot of trigger warnings that's not why i dnf'd this book by the way i dnf'd it because i genuinely could not understand the plot and was not interested in the plot at all so if I'm not interested in what I'm reading, I just feel like I can't actually digest anything. I tried listening to it on Audible, nothing was working. So I just said, we're gonna pack it away and maybe we'll pick it up in future, but I highly doubt that. So I don't have a lot to say about this book because like I said, I didn't understand it. So I don't know how I would explain it to you guys, if that makes sense. Maybe go to Goodreads and read a couple reviews if you are curious about it, but I've heard the ending is very triggering to some people. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> After that little hiccup with Ninth House, I knew that Ashley Poston could do me no wrong. So I had picked up a novel love story and the dead romantics at the same time, but I wanted to read the dead romantics first because she wrote it first. This is her newer book that just released, I believe in the beginning of July. So I was really excited about this one. Again, like I said, a lot of her books involve some magical realism, with the, which this one did as well. This book is about a woman named Elsie who loves this book series and she ends up going to a book retreat or she's supposed to go to a book retreat with her friends and she ends up actually in the world or the the town that her favorite series is set in with all of the characters and it is like fake but she's in it and she's like living through it so that's where the magical realism element comes into play in this book and it is a romance but i wouldn't say that it's like it takes a very long time for the romance to develop in this book that's what i'm gonna say and the energy that i get from this book is very quaint storybook esque if you've ever watched once upon a time the feeling that i got watching that show is exactly the feeling that i got reading this book because you're like in this storybook land world that's so like picturesque and quaint and just very cozy again i think this book would be perfect for the fall time because it's just giving cozy romance i did enjoy the storyline i wouldn't say it's my favorite ashley poston book i believe i rated this a i rated this a 4.25 okay i guess i did but i think upon reflection it's more of a four star or even a 3.75 star i don't feel like things are standing out to me from this book i thought it was very cute and very picturesque there's just something about it to me that doesn't scream like five star so i love ashley Poston's writing i always will but this isn't my favorite book by her but that's not to say i won't be reading all of the other ones that she's ever come out with because i know there's a lot on her list of books that she's written that I don't have physically and I'm excited to see what all of the buzz is about on those ones as well. Next up, one of my favorite books that I read this month, Binding 13 by Chloe Walsh. This book is all over TikTok, all over booktube. If you guys haven't heard of it, I would honestly be very surprised, but this is the first book in the Boys of Tommen series, which is set in like a private school where they all play rugby and rugby is like the sport there it's set in ireland and it's kind of like a coming of age drama romance novel or series the first and second book are following johnny and shannon are two main characters shannon is like this tiny little girl who has a lot of home 
trauma and home troubles and Johnny is like this star rugby player who's like big and broody and very protective and it kind of goes over their romance and their relationship. I will say a couple really important points. This book and this series does highlight a lot of very triggering topics abuse. I don't even want to get into it. If you want to read, there's actually a trigger warning in the beginning. Read through that just to make sure before you go into this series because there are a lot of very heavy and dark topics. But with that being said, I loved this series. It was so just like touching and shocking and emotional and heartwarming. I, I can't describe it in like one word. I need a million words to describe this book, but it was everything. And this book is huge you guys this book is 600 pages with very small writing i read it on my kindle because i just could not physically hold this book but i ripped through this book i read it in i think three days i just could not put it down and i needed to know what happened it was very drama packed lots unfolding i love the character development of both of the teenagers in this book because you just see them go through their first love and like being in a relationship and what that means when you're 16 years old and just things that you're discovering about your body. It was so beautifully written and it did bring me back a lot to when I was that age, minus the trauma that happens in this book, which I personally did not go through, but it really just showcases how a relationship a healthy relationship at that young of an age can carry you through some pretty dark dark things and i really don't have much else to say about this book besides perfection five stars i loved it and i am so excited for the remainder of the series and with that being said i also read keeping 13 on my kindle which is the second book in the series that also covers Johnny and Shannon's story. And that was the last book that I read this month, which I rated a 4.5. The reason why I gave that one a 4.5 is because I feel like there was a couple chapters in the book that were maybe a little bit dragged on or unnecessary, especially towards the end. And other than that, it was an amazing book. I love them as a couple. I love their friend group. I was laughing out loud throughout both of these books. And I'm just really excited to continue the series as a whole obsessed with the boys of tom and series i can't believe i waited this long to read it but i'm glad that i did because i feel like you always read things at the right time with that being said that's an overview of everything that i read in the month of july i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know down below if you have read any of these books if you have any of these books on your tbr and if you guys like these videos or if you want to see a tbr video or a book shopping video, just what kind of book videos you guys wanna see because I love watching them and I love creating them, but I just don't know what you guys wanna see. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below so you don't miss any more videos from me and I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys.